What up, y'all? Welcome back. We're doing a little uh, vintage Cuberino, as you uh, likely knew from the title of this video, or from the thumbnail, or from the fact that uh, it's Vintage Cube. So, Ancestor Rico. Oh, Mox Pearl. All right, I'll take Mox Pearl. Crystal Brand, very good. Mystic Confluence, very good. Volcanic Island and two fetch lands that can get a Volcanic Island. All very good. All very good. <coughs> but, a Mox is a Mox. Even though Pearl, again, as we've said previously, is likely the worst Mox. It's still a Mox. So, we're going to take it. We're going to take it. Is that correct? I wonder. I wonder if it if there is a point where you just think, well, Gristlebrand or Mystic Confluence surely happen to be better than the worst Mox. I don't know. It's a question worth worth pondering. Sub is a sub is a sailor. Hero of Bladehold goes well with our Mox Pearl. Strip Mine is an interesting thing. Thank you. Primaris Powerhouse, thank you for the resub, buddy. Really appreciate it. We got a bunch of options here. We could take Gear Hulk. Maybe Mystic Confluence tables. Never table it. We could take Hero of Blade Hold. That was the worst pass in the history of that. Oh, that's terrible news. Why? Well, I'm going to take Hero of Blade Hold. <clears throat> I'm also underwhelmed with this pack, but. What if we do just take the White Denial deck? We'll just take the Death and Taxes deck and see what happens. Sub is a sub is a Michael B. Library of Alexandria. And Thran Dynamo and Balance. I think it's just library. I'm not a big library fan, but we haven't drafted a library in a while, and I think it is strong when you can get it going. I'll take a library here. Okay, so here's a wasteland, and we already passed a strip mind. Nothing else in this pack is remotely exciting. I'm taking the wasteland here. Hmm. This is very weird. I have no idea what we're drafting here. Like, Basalt Monolith is just a, a very safe colorless card here. Yeah, I'll just take Basalt Monolith. Worm Coil Engine. Still doesn't commit us to anything. I think it's I think it's just way better than Tithe Taker. This is a really weird draft so far. <clears throat> oh, that went down the wrong pipe, so I'm probably gonna die. One can hope, right? I mean, Fetters is all right. I just none of these are like super impressive, you know. I'd be tempted to take Glory Bringer almost. We have Mox Pearl. I guess Fetters is fine. Eh. Karn is a dude. I actually a lot of people don't like Karn. I think Karn is fine. It still nets you a card, like.
Yeah, I'll take Karn. The Gristlebrand came back. The strip mine did not. Okay. Well. Wow. Wow. Okay, this just became a really easy, like... Oof. Jesus. I feel like our deck just literally audibled immediately into a black-white reanimator. The Entomb didn't come back, unfortunately. I think Yawgmoth's actually a little stronger, especially if we can get, like, Lingering Souls or Bitter Blossom. Just watched your vid where someone said that COVID is like flu if you're under 50. As someone who's dating someone who's actually not only COVID, the statement is far. Yeah, that was Josh. I love Josh to death. But I did not think that was correct. Even Angel is like it's just a fine. It's not It's not a great card by any means, but it's a, it's a definitely fine reanimate target. Pretty, 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 pretty good. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Ancestral. Mike, I can only hope we're back in 3-0 territory, buddy. <laughs> yep, that's, that's pretty good. All right. I have no idea, like, the last, like, Gristlebrand, Masquerum, Unbarrel Rides picks, like, that was... <clears throat> you can thank me for that ancestral since I arrived at the same time it did. Nice. Nice. Josh is really uh taking one for the team here. I think. <clears throat> I think it's bitter blossom because we have Yogmoth. Like I mean, also, if we get, like, Fallen Shinobi... Actually, like, we don't have any incentive to really be white just because of these. So, like, we could just be blue-black. Here's a Creeping Tar Pit that I'll definitely take. <sighs> Mox Diamond's pretty good, though. No, we're definitely not pushing white. We have no incentive to, but, like, we do have a Mox Pearl. And, and Unbarrel Rights is nice if you're able to... I think we definitely want the fixing over Freebooter. Freebooter is not more impressive than a Mox Diamond. I'm gonna take Mox Diamond. Eh, duress is actually fine. Imperial Seal is also fine. Imperial Seal getting an Ancestral Recall is actually pretty good. I'll take the Seal. I, I don't even like Seal as a card. Oh, Remand is great. I'll take a Remand, though. Uh, Misha's workshop is weird. Probably just me or Battle Sphere here, actually. Recurring Nightmare is still in the queue. Yes, yes it is. Yes it is. So that'd be sweet. That'd be a sweet pickup. Um, I think it's Battle Sphere here. Hex Maze is an awful, but Battle but Battle Sphere is actively good. Fast Bond and Gaia's Cradle. These people have no respect. I think we're taking Vindicate. I just think it's an easy splash if we get the mana. We also have Mox Diamond and Mox Pearl already, so. <clears throat> Collective Brutality. It's a discard outlet. It's also protection. Also, Basalt Monolith is just great at letting us cast both of these on turn turn four, so. Sub is a sub is my be. Thank you. Primaris House <laughs> with a gifted sub, buddy. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm going to take Shambling Vent here. I take Corpse Stance, but a lot of these guys I just want to... I, I think I want regular reanimation. If you have Eldrazi, Corpse Stance is good, but... Have you seen their Wormcoil engine art? N no. <clears throat> Actually. I've seen the new Massacre Worm art, but not Wormcoil engine. 
Um, Kai is decent. I think I'd just rather have the Seacrum Coast to make sure we can cast our things. We can also just take uh, Vindicate number two. Or Containment Priest. Containment Priest is actually a fine sideboard card. You guys wanted the Kaya over the Fixing? I'd rather have the Fixing so we can play white cards rather than have another white card. Oh my god. These text messages. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, like, we don't want to play Contamin Priest and reanimate other things. But, like, we don't actually have any reanimate spells yet, right? Except for Unbarrel Rights. So, we're mainly just casting these. So far. Let me look up this Worm Coil Engine. Is this it? No, that's just like some fan art bullshit. Is it? It's Double Masters, right? I guess I have to enter Double Masters. I see the Kaladesh one. <clears throat> oh, look at this thing. Is this it? Here, I'll show you guys. Actually, Baneslayer is just fine. It's just a fine card. I mean, I'm not super impressed with it, but... Sub is a sub is a sailor. Eh, I'll take a tasker. That is a late Misha's workshop. I'll take it. Eh, Gideon's not... Eh. Actually, maybe we're just splashing the blue... Oh, Mana Crypt and Emrakul? Holy magolies. This is, uh... This is your Worm Coil Boy. From, uh... Double Masters. Fan art BS. Way to discourage creativity. <laughs> you know, it's funny because the only reason I said that was like... Because I'm always looking for like... There's always alternate art versions of cards. And I'm like, ooh, let me see this new version of this card. And there's like four alternate art versions that are just not super... I'm like, oh, I didn't know this was alternate art. I gotta like sift through them and find the real ones. I mean, it's Mana, it's mana Crypt, 100%. So we're just gonna take Mana Crypt. Emrakul's cool and all, but we don't have any way to really take advantage of an Emrakul, so. Uh, Signet, Blood Crypt, Ponder. I like Moldrifter and Ponder here. I feel like it's probably just Ponder, right? Toasty Bear with the gifted sub, buddy. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it, my dude. <coughs> Could still use a little more fixing here. I think it's probably Ponder. I mean, we only have, like, one white card, two white cards. This is double white, though, so we're either going to have to decide not to play it or we're going to have to play... Oh, Karn. And Worn Power Stone. And Banishing Light. I mean, Worn Power Stone does get us to six. Interesting. I, I think it's just Karn. Like, we have Mana Crypt, Basalt Monolith. Like... I want to take Karn. I think Karn is real, real solid. I like Thoughtseize here. I also like Golgari Signet. I don't think I hate Dark Ritual. Maybe Dark Ritual tables. I think it's actually Thoughtseize. Celestia Signet. It's kind of like a Golgari Signet. Verdant Catacombs doesn't get anything for us right now. Liliana is a discard outlet. But right now we only have Unburial Rights to be reanimating. I think it's still probably the pick. I think Lily's pretty decent. Council's Judgment. Oh, and a Watery Grave. We don't have anything to really tinker except for Basalt Monolith, which definitely isn't good enough. I think it's actually Watery Grave. I don't think we're double whiting here. 
Ozilek is interesting. I don't think Resto is good enough. I like Bitter Blossom and Yogmoth. That's actually pretty decent. I mean, do we just Kozilek here? Could also just take Rakdos Signet. Could also take Looter, actually. Looter's not terrible. I think Looter's probably the where we want to be. Thank you. Grim Monolith? Aceru, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. 34 months, man. That's like three years. Yeah, I'm taking Grim Monolith. That's an insanely late Grim Monolith. Where was the Exhum? Was there an Exhum in that pack that I just missed? I think I just I think I just blacked out when I saw Grim Monolith, guys. I'm sorry. Uh Giver of Runes is interesting. I mean, I guess we're just casting things naturally. <laughs> uh, Vraska would be decent if we actually picked up some of the... Um, I did skip... I just... I totally blacked out. It'll come back, though. I mean, I don't feel bad about taking a Grim Monolith by any means, but... This is 22 cards. I mean, I could, also, I could also see playing uh, 22 cards, Mox Diamond, and <clears throat> 8 and 17 lands. I'll take Arena. Yogmoth is also a discard outlet. I'm going to take Jitte. I'm going to take Sword. Somebody's going to get a late, late Avenger of Zendikar. I don't even hate, like, Sword of Body and Mind is one of the best swords, and having Sword and Bitter Blossom is pretty decent. I could see cutting, like, Unis Prowler, because we already have Looter, Collector Brutality, Liliana, and Yogmoth. And I think Unis Prowler is probably the weakest. <clears throat> and maybe playing like Sword, Jitte, Phyrexian Arena, something like that. Quad Black? Nah. You're crazy. We can just reanimate it too. We have Unbarrel Rights. We have Ancestral Ponder and Looter to find things. We have Imperial Seal, we can just go get Unbarrel Rights, like... What was the last pick? Did I miss it? Plus with Grim Monolith and Basalt Monolith and Mox, Mox, Mana Crypt, I don't feel like, like as long as we, as long as we get four black, I don't think we're actually that far off from casting Gristlebrand relatively easily. Um, we get one more card. It's either Sword, Jitte, or like Faith's Fetters. What's our removal? We have Vindicate. That's pretty much it. I could see playing Face Fetters here. Oh, let's cut the Bane Slayer, actually. Double White seems a little ambitious. Yeah, and I think it's actually Phyrexian Arena. Phyrexian Arena seems good here. Actually, Phyrexian and Bitter Blossom is pretty, pretty ambitious. Hellkite? Why would we play Hellkite? We can't even cast Hellkite. That's wild. I think it's one of these two. The problem is with six creatures, like, it's really hard to justify this. Like, we say six creatures and a Bitter Blossom is just not a lot. Interesting. Are we just heavier? There's no way we're heavier white, right? We have two white cards and a white splash. Four blue cards. Actually, Tasker seems fine. I can I can get behind that. Alright. One, two, three, four, five. 
I think one planes is fine. If they path us or winds of abandon us, we get to get it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. It's probably six here. Four, five, six. Nine, ten, eleven. So this is nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So seven, eight, nine, ten black. Yeah, I don't think we're playing library in a three color deck. Like if when this was like a two color deck, or even like just mono white, like I think it was fine. But when, now that we're three colors, I don't think we can really play library here. One, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six, seven. I'm actually cut one of these and add another swamp. Like we're very heavy swamps. All right, 14 lands. Wait, no, we get one more, right? So five, four, five, six, and then seven. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then white, we have one, two, three, four, five. Did I not add the swamp? <clears throat> Wild, what a maniac. One, two, three, four, five. This is still six blue sources. Or seven blue sources. One, two, three. No, four, five, six. Six blue sources. Which seems fine. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. Sub is a sub is a sailor. Interesting. And we're definitely keeping this hand for sure. Library is kind of a pet card for me because it's the most expensive card I own, which is part of the reason I'm sad when it doesn't. I, I totally understand that. We could actually go turn one Collector Brutality, discard like Mere Battlesphere, into turn two. Are they just, what is what is happening? Into turn two Tassiger, because we'll have Collector Brutality in the card we discard. So we'd have four mana plus the two cards. Turn two Tassiger seems pretty decent. We're very far off of like activating Tassiger though for that. Oh, um, interesting. So one, two, three, four, land in the graveyard. Hmm. I was curious if we can turn one Tassiger here, but I don't think so now. One, two, three, four. We're so close to turn one Tassiger with this, uh, the Mox Diamond now. This is also relatively dangerous because it's cast with Escalade two modes. Could have played this to play around Spell Pierce. Watch them Spell Pierce or Daze. They can't Daze us. They can Spell Pierce us though. <clears throat> Tendrils, Gush, and Seething Song. So it's definitely Seething Song. They can't gush for a while. But next turn they could actually go Seething Song, Memory Jar. Yeah, let's get rid of Song. So next turn we'll have one, two, three. Yeah, the next turn we just get to Tasker. Could I get my pair of Frank at Discounted Me Undies signed? Are they. Are they worn? Okay, so that was your draw, so you have... Oh, man, I didn't even have to discard this for the two life. 
One, two, three, four, five. Um, I think we're fine exiling two. So we're just gonna play this. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. We could actually get rid of our whole graveyard, vindicate their land, and play Tassiger. Do we care about that? I think we want the Mirror Battle Sphere in here, though. And we can just vindicate next turn. Let's get rid of this and this. We want to keep this in here in case we draw Mirror Battle Sphere. One, two, three, four. You know where I can buy bulk full art lands? Um, I just get mine on like Cool Stuff Inc. or uh, like TCG Player. And by bulk, I mean like I'll have to I'll buy like four, six, whatever. Um, that's where I got like I had a I have a I have a like a, a play set of like twenty each of the uh, unhinged lands, the good ones. So okay, sure. So we know the still know the four cards in your hand. I think getting rid of Ancient Tomb here seems really strong. But I mean, like, most most stores don't have 40 full arts. Should have been Tails Never Fails. Oh, Bitter Blossom and... Okay, well, we're just going to do it all then. <clears throat> One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're just going to go Vindicate this. They're probably on remand. What does that mean? Like, we know there are four cards. Tendrils, Gush, Swamp, and Memory Jar. I mean, even if, you, even if you're on remand, you can still tap these two, and then you have Ancient Tomb Signet up, which still lets you cast remand, so. I actually have no idea why they, why they did that, actually. So, your guess is as good as mine. Having Bitter Blossom and Mana Crypt is pretty rough. If we had Phyrexian Arena, I'd be like, well, maybe we're just dead. We do need another blue source to start activating Tasker, which would be nice. Oh, they played Swamp, so they have one unknown card, and they can't cast any of these three cards. Six turns? Why six turns? Oh, because of this? Well, we won the flip, so we bought, us, bought ourselves another turn. Well, I mean, we have the win in three, so they have to really, like... With the risky anime girls on them. Yeah, those are those are rough. One, two, three, four, five. God, one blue. That's sad. Yeah, no real incentive to play this one, but one, two, three, four, five, six. I've been seriously been building my own queue. I started a list, but I'm looking for under the radar cards that you would recommend. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, like, all the under the radar cards are just like fun pet cards of mine. Um One of the things I like doing is going through, like, commander sets and looking for cool cool cards in the commander sets. Ooh, Wishclaw Talisman. Give me that. Okay, so we know three of the four cards in your hand still. Oh my god, they're giving me a Wishclaw Talisman. Can you only use this as a sorcery? Only during your turn. That makes sense. So we're dealing five next turn. Can we just win? Is there a way we can win? Can we get a card in our deck that deals three? I 
I mean, we can actually go get Unbear Out Rights and bring back Mirror Battle Sphere, but... Sword of Fire and Ice here would be great. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tails never fails. We can actually just go get Thoughtseize and like take whatever they got. Dang it, Tails, you failed. All right. Um, actually, Remand doesn't seem terrible either. It's got to just be thought seize, right? Like, I don't think they can do anything if we just thought seize them. Huh. Gifts ungiven. I mean, their hand doesn't do anything, right? Like, they can gift, they have no mana left. They lion's eye. <coughs> they can put gifts on the stack, discard their hand. I can just get rid of gifts here. Like, they can go lion's eye tendrils. I think it is gifts. Like, they get to go lion's eye, gifts ungiven, crack lion's eye with gifts on the stack, get like Yogmoth's will and like lotus. I think Lion's Eye is actually the glue holding this hand together, surprisingly. I don't care about Memory Jar. I don't care about Gush. Yeah, let's just take Lion's Eye Diamond. I feel like without the mana, they can't really do anything. Like, they can still Gifts Ungiven for four, but then they can't do anything else. Like, we know their whole hand. They can't cast Gush. They can't cast Memory Jar. They have to get a land or a mana source with the Wish Claw Talisman, or else they have to draw one. I mean, I think that's just game. They are doing everything second main. What is this? They they added three and then they wish clawed? So they're at three. So if they can get rid of Tassiger somehow, they go to one and they do get another turn. That's a one one more one more mana. So now you can go gifts, but you have no mana left if you do that. You can t you can't tendrils, sure. I mean, if it's like Lotus Mana Crypt Mox Mox, you might have something. But even then, like we still know your hand, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, this is ambitious. You have no mana left over, so all right, all right. So you saw tendrils. I'm tempted to bring in wasteland here, to be honest with you. Yeah, I can actually see taking out Yawgmoth. He doesn't really do much against the non-creature deck, and I think I think Una's probably just a beater. Masquerum's not great either here. It's just a big fat dodo. I 
I mean, if they're trying to tendrils us, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to go more white and bring in like Gideon and Baneslayer and Hero and just go a little heavier on the white mana. I mean, I'll board in Massacre Room if they have goblins, but... I can take out Face Fitters, too. It's not really super exciting here. And let's add two more white mana. I think this seems better. Oh, I like turn one remand. <clears throat> Let's keep it. Your deck is better than cinnamon sugar broccoli. Doubt it. Cinnamon sugar broccoli is banging. Oh, they got Lotus Bloom up in here? I'll remand that thing for sure. Um, let's discard an island. We don't have any double blue cards, but we still have another island, so... Next turn we can... Um, Basalt Monolith? <coughs> I'm down to Clown. Until I'm dead in the ground. Is this round one? God, it's taking forever. I'm going to let that resolve because I'd rather save my Rand for the Lotus Bloom. That seems much better. Of course, that does give them two spells for... Uh... Oh, Liliana's interesting here. Yeah, that's got to be better than Basalt Monolith, right? Stripping away the uh, the Storm Deck's hand seems pretty nuts. And we can easily discard Umbero Rights here and feel just fine about it. Oh, what up, Jimmy the Mole? Yep, I'm just going to have six here. I ain't going to represent Force of Negation or Force of Will or Pact of Negation or Will of Negation or Force of Pact or Pact of Force or Force Pact Negation. Did I am well? Do 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 do. We can actually discard hero. We don't have a second white, so. But we do have an unburial righty, boys. gonna play land here and we're gonna pass it over I'm not gonna play basalt monolith because then we have to tap it to remand and we're 100 remanding this so Put it on the stack, stack it up, and stack it in. <clears throat> Boy, 
This is basically like just countering it, like hard countering it. They gotta wait three more turns. I mean, that just put to storm count at two. But I don't know if that makes a difference. We can actually get rid of Basalt Monolith here, maybe? I don't know. Depends on what we draw, I guess. As with everything in life. Huh. Well. Let's get a Hero of Blade hold. Do -da. Do -da. Ripping apart their hand when they have... When they're storming is just not good for them. I know it's bold claim. Hand destruction, hand disruption, not good for storm. More at eleven. Get rid of planes here. Could get rid of basalt monolith. It gives us six mana next turn, which is like the sweet spot. I guess seven mana is more like the sweet spot for Karn and for uh, Worm Coil or uh, Mirabal Sphere rather. But now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and all we need is one more black for Gristlebrand. The other way, the other way, we need two lands. This way, we need one black source. So I don't know. Basalt Monolith seems like it's probably better. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's fine. You have one card in hand. Sure. Alright, so you have two cards and a Lion's Eye Diamond. I mean, if, if one of your cards is like Yawgmoth's Will, it's actually decent. The Gifts I'm given? Memory Jar. But you have no mana. You crack Memory Jar and then pop Lion's Eye Diamond? Yeah, Liliana the Veil is still very, very good. I mean, she's just a top tier planeswalker. Like, uh, she's like all time top tier, so. Sure. I mean, I would love to keep these cards, but. Wait, they didn't crack their Lion's Eye Diamond in response? So that they can't crack it now? This is all very strange. Like, you're literally supposed to crack it in response to the memory jar so that you don't have to discard your new hand. What? I'm so confused. Because now we just get to Ultimate Liliana? Manamorphose? Oh, they cracked it now, but they discarded their whole hand. Oh, they have Past in Flames. Okay, but now you get to cast it with nothing else, though. You have no mana. It's instant and sorcery, so, like, you have no mana to do anything. Yeah, okay, that was very strange. All right, well. What up, Yusimi? Is it Yusimi? Is that how I should say it? I had a disgusting storm tour with Citadel. Ancestral Vision on top. And it, can you cast Ancestral Vision if it's on top of a Citadel? Because it doesn't have a casting cost. So it's really weird. Like, sometimes you can. Like, you can't with Snapcaster... But you can with, like, Dark Dwellers. You know what I mean? I guess because it gives you a mana cost and it can't. You see I am too wise for you. <laughs> oh. Well. 
that's fair, I guess. I'll keep this hand. I mean, if we can just top deck a, a Mox or a Mana, a Mana, Mana Crypt. Mana, Mana, Mana Crypt. Oh, that's a thing. We could not. We could not. Actually, I think it's worth pondering here. Like, we have three mana, so regardless, we'll be able to play Basalt Monolith on three. But if we hit something really good, I think we just ship this. Yeah, we can ship this. Okay, well, that could be very good. We also have three black mana in hand, so we could literally go turn three, Basalt Monolith. No, we can't. Well, maybe we can. We have to, If we hit another untapped black, we can. UCI, that works. That's super easy. Because I want to go turn two, remand, turn three, monolith, but that only gives us two black, and the third black we come and play tapped is what's happening here. <clears throat> yep. All right, so now you're going to have six mana on turn three. About par for the course. Oh, that'll do. All right. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Sylvan Carrier does not die to Mass Massacre Worm, but... Getting over a UTI. Dude, UTIs are the worst. I say this as a male who has had a UTI before. Channel. Yep, that's pretty good. We're just going to remand whatever they channel and hope they can't cast it again. Like if they pay like 10 or something... Six, seven. <clears throat> that's a yikes for me, dog. That's really that's really annoying. It's absolutely infuriating. I mean, just pay another eight, you know, like, and then kill us. The reason you can cast vision instead of like, it allows you to cast using life, which is an alter cast cost where a snapcaster is not allowed. Yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> Five, six, seven, eight. I don't know how we beat. We can't beat this, right? Like, this is just, this is just it. So, I mean, I guess what I hoped with remand was that they. I mean, like, we're just gonna be. We're going to play a land, we attack, they attack for seven. We play a second land, collect a brutality, they attack for seven. So now we're at six. We play a third land tapped, and if we kill this, they kill two more of our lands. And that means they haven't done, like, they still have other cards in their hand. So, sort of body and mind actually seems pretty good here. Let's bring an Unis Prowler, sort of body and mind. Let's take out Tassiger. I just play forty one here. Yeah, I guess this is fine. Jitte seems really slow. Like I, I don't have the time to play a guy, play a Jitte, equip the Jitte, attack them with Jitte, uh, kill their guy. Like, it's just, it's very slow. Like, they're not gonna, like, they're gonna actually play whatever they want to use the mana for way before then. Especially because we only have, like, two creatures that can equip it. Like, Una's Prowler and, like, Luteril Core before then. I'm gonna mulligan this hand. And that's a, that's a Sneeper. Actually, I'm pretty sure we just play Ancestral here. Like, we don't have to discard because of mulliganing so <clears throat> like even like even Liliana might be too slow right now well that's not what we want to do let's thought seize first thank you UCI thanks so much for the sub buddy really appreciate it oh crater hoof oracle sundering titan 
Well, we're taking the Oracle because your hand is trash without the Oracle. Oracle is literally like you could look at like your turn twoing Oracle, which is pretty insane. So, being able to take that, unless they top deck channel, what are the odds of that, guys? Low. The odds are low. All right, sounds good. Get rid of your boy. Also, Unbarrel Rights again is a pretty solid discard discard target. Wish we had another Ancestral. I feel like that Ancestral just didn't even help us. Which is a weird thing to... <laughs> oh, wow. It's okay, guys. They didn't top deck it. It was the second turn. They got it after the second turn. I am dead inside. <sighs> cool. Must be nice. This is why we can never trophy. Like, this is it right here. Because we have no way to deal with top decked fucking channel after we thought sees them. I mean, theoretically, here's here, here's here's what we could have done theoretically. We could have theoretically taken this with Thoughtseize, and then they could play. We they could play Oracle. We just kind of ignored the Oracle, you know. Actually, this is not terrible. This is surprisingly not terrible. <laughs> and they discarded their Crater Hoof, so their only card in hand is Ancient Tomb? I mean, we have to hope they don't draw, like, Wreck Sage or Acidic Slime, I guess. That's our... That's our out, right? That's pretty bad. <clears throat> Talk about some of the worst cards you can draw here. We have an Unburial Rites with no creature in our graveyard. And we have no discard outlet either, so... So if we can just top deck Black Lotus here, it'd be really good. <coughs> Oh yeah, whatever this is, getting remanded immediately. I'm sure it's a primeval titan. Bribery? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Nobody cares. Well, we know they have bribery in hand, so they're just going to take Gristlebrand. And then we get to lose again. After, like... One, two, three, four, five, six. We, can, we have six mana right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to concede because we have no... I mean, throw away the Battle Ball to what? Like, to instead of Unburial Rights? I mean, that only seems correct now. I mean, I don't know. It's like... Yep. They go to nine. So if we actually draw an answer for Gristlebrand... Oh, Lord... Vindicate off the top would be absolutely legit. <laughs> I 
I mean, we can play Battle Sphere here and take eight. I don't know how we'd win after that. One, two, three, four, five. This is six. Get rid of the vent. Well, this is what we got. So they get to attack for eight. Then draw seven and still gain a life. That's pretty funny. We have no way to bounce Crystal Brand, unfortunately. I don't think we have a single way to bounce that. Have you checked out Space Force yet? No, not yet. But I'm, it's definitely on my list. I mean, I'll pretty much watch anything with Steve Carell in it. Steve Carell is just has earned my my trust. Thank you. Mr. Tasty with the gifted subs, man. Thank you, my dude. Thank you. Show and tell. <sighs> wild. Thank you. Just wild. Thank you. Mr. Tasty, thank you, man. I appreciate it, my dude. Thank you. Sure. Massacre off the top. <clears throat> Does that do anything? Yeah, I, actually, Massacre off the top wins us the game, right? Because it would get rid. No, now, now it doesn't. It would have before. Basalt monolith. So they would just go block Battle Sphere here, block the mirror here. And we would XL 20, go to one card left in our library. Yeah. Down here, salt is a way of life. Well, I mean, thank you. Whatever. Sometimes you just can't. Uh... What would be the last? I want to see the last card because they would have milled us for 20. We would have had one card left to draw. Cyborg Yui, thanks so much for the reset, buddy. I mean, you can't, like, it's, what are you going to do against drawing uh, channel two games in a row? Exactly when you need it. Ponder. Comically Ponder would have been the last card. Ponder into Sundering Titan every fucking game. It's really, uh... Really a challenge. Really a challenge. Hey guys, let's thought seize them so they don't have their, their their channel on turn two. Just kidding, they'll have it on turn four after two top decks. And still have exactly the correct card to play, Sundering Titan in hand. Seems good. Yeah, into bribery, into Gristlebrand. Yeah, I mean like, you got it. <laughs> okay, I'll keep this hand, because it has Ancestral Recall. We can put Mask Worm back. Also, Bitter Blossom of Thoran is great here. So we're going to five, then we're going to four, but we could possibly draw literally no lands. Sounds good. Sounds good. That's why I gave up too much skill for me! Thank oh, you. Okay, that's a land. It's lots easier. Show and tell. Is this the same deck? <laughs> oh, that's a Tinker. That's not a show and tell. That's a Tinker. Um, hmm. Four mana Karn. 
So you're just going to go land Azorius Signet, then you're going to go Tinker after that. Which is pretty rough. I don't know what you're getting, but if it's Mirror Battle Sphere Ring, I think it's just got to be Tinker. Tinker's just like the strongest card here. Plus you have two artifacts, so... If this is three lands, I'm snap keeping. Two lands? Still snap keeping. Did I play a land this turn? Yes, I did. Um, What is your hand now? So basically nothing we can... Oh, they also have Nature's Claim for Bitter Blossom. So we're going to play Vent next turn. I don't think we're playing Bitter Blossom because then it just gets killed. Okay, yep, so you want Planes, Azorius Signature. Yep, let's just go Vent here. Oh, we could have went Swamp Tassiger, but I don't think I want to exile my Ancestral. I'd rather just activate Tassiger to get it back. So next turn we can go Collective Brutality, steal their thing, discard Bitter Blossom, and then... Um, or discard Mirror Battle Stare and then play Bitter Blossom, which seems decent. Cultivate's fine. We know this is your four cards. Force Force Planes. Let's see what they get. Oh, Badger, what up, my dude? Island Forest. Putting Island into play. So yeah, your entire hand. Seems good. Oh, they didn't play the the Porcelain Generis, so we actually don't have to discard anything here. <clears throat> but we do know their entire hand, and they are going to get to play Primeval Titan next turn. I guess we can Vindicate that guy. God, it's really sad just getting a Nature's Claim. Sorry, but yeah. <laughs> uh... Hmm. We can also just play Tassiger. Not care about Nature's Claim leaving Ancestral. Yeah, I mean, Krellic and Brutality to the Claim, but like they also have Porcelain Engineer, which I'd like to get rid of with Brutality. So I'm just wondering if Tassiger is just the better play here. And then they play Primeval Titan, we Vindicate it. Yeah, I think actually Tassiger is probably just better. I'll let them play the Porcelain Engineer so I can each get the value out of it. One, two... We're all wearing masks here, so you can't tell who the Uggos are. It's true. Here comes your boy. Yep. Big old prime dick. What? I mean, we can also attack with Tasker, let them block, and then collect a brutality this guy and get the nature's claim. It's not terrible. I have ugly eyes. Um, I mean, now we're in a position where we can, like, eh, Karn's a little obnoxious. <clears throat> so, one, two, three. Definitely get rid of this idiot. Let's just see their hand. Yep, so Karn Plains Porcelain Engineer. That's pretty unexciting. Alright, I mean, they do get Karn. But then we just get to kill it? Not yet. It goes to six? God, Karn's huge. If we hit a land, we can actually go Bitter Blossom Yawgmoth in the same turn, which is nice. So 
So this guy came down. They paid two? Did they play with planes? They did. So another one card is Karn plus whatever they drew. Uh, I will give you Island. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They can cast Ulamog. Great news. Great success. Give it to me one more. One, two, three, four. We have two left over. Seems good. They hit Ulamog. So next turn they just get to cast Ulamog. So even if like we even if we take this guy out. Oh boy. Oh goody. Guys, I'm really tired of losing to this Ulamog. If they win with your card, they're pretty much, but that's not my card, that's their card. Thank you. Really? Fascinating. Steven C, thank you so much for the resub, buddy. Really appreciate it. So they just cast the log to get rid of Yawgmoth and Bitter Blossom. Seems good. Thirty-five months, man. That's wild. One, two, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus the island is eleven. Yikes. I'm going to sack Tassiger to kill the Legionnaire. And I, I mean, maybe we draw Thoughtseize. We did shuffle it back in, didn't we? No, that was a different game. I believe that was a different game. Thoughtseize one time. It was a swamp. So now I have two permanents. They just get rid of both. We have no way to deal with uh, an Ulamog outside of maybe top decking face fetters. Yep, and now we have no permanence. I mean, maybe we could have kept the Bitter Blossom in hand, but... Oh, God. I, I just don't, like, I mean, I wish I could live in a... Wait. I wish I could live in a world where, like, my draws were this perfect. But alas, I live in the real world where I get regular draws. <sighs> well, they can't minus Karn because they had a minus Karn to get Ulamog. Wait, they got rid of my white source? Okay, so good. I actually have no way to, to deal with this piece of shit now. Yep, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Nice. 15 lands and I'm getting flooded regularly. So that's kind of that's kind of neat. Um, yeah, I mean this is nothing our sideboard really does much against them, so and maybe Unis Prowler just for the beats. I also feel like with Karn, Mirror Battle, Steel Worm Coil, Basalt Monolith, Grim Monolith, and uh, Mana Crypt, we would have been able to um, cast one of them at least once, or even our own Karn, uh, you know, before turn 7, but not today. Badger, thank you for the gifted sub, buddy. Really appreciate it, my dude. Um, maybe I'll just play on his Prowler as a dude. Play him as a man. 
Sure. Thank you. Shut up and take my money. Oh, okay. One stealing Kerwood's joke buck. Nice. Oh, see, here you go. Now we're talking. Um, so we can go land this Grimal. Yeah, I'll keep this hand. For sure, dude. Of course, we have we have a discard outlet. So if we actually manage to get like a fat daddy. All right, five mana next turn. Could play Basalt Monolith off of the Grim Monolith, but. Oh, good. Oh, good. The exact thing we did not want. So we got one, two, three, four, six. We have nine mana right now? So Gristlebrand's not an option, but Mirror Battlesphere, Karn, Worm Coil, four, four mana Karn. All of those are good. Umbera Rites is pretty dead now, thanks to their Relic of Progenitus. Still nothing. This is just amazing. This is what I mean. Like, my opponent's like, oh, I'll get chan I'll just top deck my channel when I have two guys in hand. I'm like, all right, cool. I have nine, nine, ten mana. What are you going to do with it? Uh, nothing, really. What do you got? One unbarrel rights and a way to discard a creature? All right, I'll play Relic of Progenitus. Okay. Sure. I like how you keep talking about other cards when you're going to draw land. You and me both, buddy. You and me both. Okay, so... Reveal an island and a forest. I believe the island went into place. We know you got a forest. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, I'm pretty sure I just want to collect a Brutality and see what they have. Regrowth. Ugin. Mirari's Wake. Mind Slay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So next turn they just go 6 mana. Yep. Get rid of the Regrowth, I guess. <sighs> next turn they just get to tap Grim Monolith and Basalt Monolith. And then we're like, cool. Yep, you got it. There's only one card. Just pick it random. Pick it automatically, please. Don't let me click the single card that's in my graveyard. One, two, three, four, five, six. They played Forest. What do they play this time? You think Marari's Wake or Mind Slaver? No, Zori's singing into, Mind, into, into, into Marari's Wake. Sounds good. Just make sure you have enough mana for that Ugin next turn. Watch her and draw Gristle Brand with one black source. Tassiger. <laughs> oh, Tassiger, 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 Tassiger. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So they just go Mind Slaver, activate Mind Slaver? Sure. <laughs> sure. He's going to Mind Slaver your next turn. Yes, I'm aware. I'm aware. Well, 1-2 again with a deck that looked really, really good and had Mox Pearl, Mox Diamond, Mana Crypt, and Ancestral.
We drew another Swamp, guys. So, there's really not even much they can do. They have no targets for Umbrero Rights. All they can do is really Grim Monolith and tap the, tap the Monolith and the Basalt Monolith. So... So to be clear in this game, I have drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine mana sources and three spells. So this is interesting. Okay. Th thanks. Not quite a good fight, but you sure were present. Yeah. And also, so to be fair, this is a tenth mana source. One, two. Also, this is an eleventh one, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana sources versus one, two, three spells. Sure. That's a reasonable that's a reasonable amount. I mean, now Mind Slaver is gone. So they have one card which is Ugin, right? Like that's what we know. So if they want to Ugin and kill Tastigar, they have to negative six, and then I can just Shambling Vent it. But what are you going to do? Yeah, he should have probably played out the Crypt, because then I get, there's at least a chance for me to take three. Uh, and me I, then I just get to play it for free. Like So it's not really a... That's interesting. Okay, so still Ugin and one more card. Here comes Eugene! <whistles> Plus Singer is really the only option, otherwise... You... It's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> it's actually shocking. Cool. Do I get a turn? Awesome. Well, nine mana, so I can't really do anything. Fourteen. Do we go to one if they if they play Ugin and shoot us, and then we have to find a way to deal with Emrakul as well. When's the last time you did better than 2-1-2? Two, two? Last night, I 2-1'd a single draft. So, that was fun. So, I think I'm 1-6 I'm in the past seven drafts of 1-2-ing. Shut up and take my money. Forget this draft and try again. Sammy, I love you, buddy. Thank you, dude. We definitely will after this. Oh, boy. I don't know, man. When I get Grim Monolith, like, seventh pick or whatever, a Mox Pearl, Ancestral Recall, and a Mana Crypt, and we still go 1-2 because our opponents are, like, literally top deck champs. It's... I mean, they they activate Karn one time, and they have... They hit an Ulamog with 10 mana. Okay. Then they go Mind Slaver into Emrakul, taking two of my turns back-to-back. They draw one card off of Relic and hit Ulama and hit Emrakul. Okay. And then they, like, the other one, literally top six. I mean, like, it's hard to be, it's hard to, like, I, I'm acknowledging the fact that, like, it's not me in the sense that, like, <laughs> it's not me in the sense of, like, hey. Wow. 
we're in the game. We are alive in the game. One, two, one, two, three. Actually, do you want to play Karn here? We are alive in the fucking game. No, I think going to seven is fine. I think I want the Karn here. We are just we are slamming Liliana edicting. We're just at, make, getting our seven life first. Like it's not like we're not doing that. I mean, I said we are alive in the game like four times. Do I just want to make a? If we negative two, then Karn just dies. I think we're just revealing here. Because we can make a 5-5. Five, five. What else did we get? Remand? Sure, I can get a remand next turn. 1, 2, 3. Could have actually played Mana Crypt to untap Basalt Monolith, but that's 3 from this and 3 from this, but this isn't 1. I think we are alive and in the game. This is pretty wild. I don't know what happened. Deals 3 to Liliana. Sure. 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 Eight, nine, ten. Let's see what the top deck is this time. You guys ready? Oh, <laughs> oh wow. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Can't beat can't beat mono lottery winners for your opponents, guys. You just can't do it. It's okay, guys. They only floated twenty mana, so. God, man, that's amazing, dude. We kick, we kick and, and, and scratch and claw our way back into games only for our opponent to top deck the perfect card every single time. It's, 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 it's unreal. It's actually unreal. I mean, face fetters off the top would be phenomenal. Ancestral recall. Let's play all the things that we can play. Let's cast this. We can go this into this, which gives us four. But then, like, if we just lose the flip, we're dead, right? So, like... This is four mana with Ancestral. Like, we could try to hit... Face Fetters? Face Fetters on Ugin's real good. I mean, let's Ancestral first, see if we hit it, I guess. <sighs> Come on, one time, face fetters. <sighs> Fucking Christ. <sighs> I mean, Ugin puts us to one next turn, like... Come on. And we don't have a choice. Like, we just don't have a choice here. Because we're going to die two turns to Ugin. So, like, next turn has to be a turn. This gives us a chance to win. If we don't play this, we don't do anything. Like, I guess we could go to one, play this next turn. But, like, this lets us play Karn right now. And then we still get to untap into five mana. So, like... <sighs> no, there's no way we get six mana. We could add five mana with the... Um... Yep. 
ponder and a swamp. I mean, if we survive next turn, we could theoretically... We just have to not die. Like, that's literally what it comes down to. So, one, two, three, four. Mask worm, worm coil. I don't even think we have the luxury of shambling venting here. We definitely can't watery grave. Don't care about basalt monolith. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, we'll have unbearer rights, but like we're gonna have to like literally face fetters next turn. So we have to like grab ponder and hope it's in like the top three slash four five four cards plus our draw step. I mean, the odds are decent. We can't imperial seal. Thank you. Funk Master Max 2K. Thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. Unseen Spectre. I don't think I saw you, but thank you for the reset, my dude. We're at one. All I have to do is not pass and, like, they just kill us next turn. Like, And this is also at risk to killing us in two turns as well, so... We have to win at least two out of three flips. Yep, that's... Also lethal. Jesus Christ. And... Thank you. Oh, we're still alive. Oh, God. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. Why are they at 20? Oh, my God. Put a card you own with a silver counter. We have to, like, put Ponder into our hand. Faith's Fetters. There it is. There it is. No. One, two, three. Play a swamp. Faith's Fetters, this guy. Yep, we go to one. We have to survive two more flips now, actually, because of... Dude, this is a game, at least. I mean, we could just get lucky with this, right? Or we could not get lucky at all. Yeah, there's no way they don't go after Karn. This is so, this is so, this is so ridiculous. <sighs> it never ends. Their top decks are actually insane. Their top decks were like upheaval, Emrakul upheaval tinker. Okay. I mean, they're just going to get Inkle Leviathan and we're just straight dead because we have an island, so. Or a mere battle sphere, and then we're straight dead again, so. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. <laughs> that's, oh, that's incredible, dude. Also, first strike click kills us, so we have to block... Or, or this is just going to kill us. So thank you guys for watching. Slam those... Oh my god, why are we still alive? Slam the like and subscribe buttons. Jesus Christ. So, we just some barrel rights like worm coil? Are we, are we not dead here? One, two, three, four, five. How are we still alive? I don't understand this game at all. Well, we have two blockers. The 5-5 five, five blocks here, Worm Boy blocks here. Then this guy does die. But either way, they're both going to die. No, Worm Coil blocking here, and this guy blocking here, or the Worm Coil doesn't die. That seems better. Yeah, they could. we could still lose to no attacking, but if we, if we don't lose to no attacking... 
then we're then we get an attack. We also only have seven mana, not eight mana. So let's see what their top deck is this time. Oh my god, really? Yeah, I mean, this is a fine... Wow, what? That's wild. So we're not dead? Still gonna Tails. Oh my god, we finally lost the flip. So next time we just get to play Gristlebrand? And we still have another Umbrero Whites to get another Worm Coil out? Or a Massacre Worm? 6, 79, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? 15. God, we can do like 15 damage here, which is pretty comical. We can Umbrero Whites Massacre Worm, which kills this guy. This is really wild, dude. So we're at six poison. We can only take three. So we need to put like nine in front of this dude. This game is insane. Let's unbarrow, right? It's targeting Massacre Worm. One, two, three, four... Kill this dude. You go to eighteen. No, we we can't we can't worm coil. We have to try to win this game. Like we got to put two in front of this dude. This guy's this guy's only a ten ten for now. Let's not forget it's twelve. We need to block three poison or we need to block nine rather because it's a twelve twelve. So seven eight nine in front. We can attack them for ten. Actually, we can block with both of these and attack them for thirteen and put them to five. If they have rule for any of these, though, we're in bad shape. So I think we just attack for 10. We plan on blocking with these two to, to block 10. And then we still have a lot of damage on board, plus a Gristle Brand. That's... Plus we can cast Gristle Brand next turn. I mean... Ugh. Backed up to 7 life. Oh, none of these were top decks, though. We had the Unburied Rights in hand. We had the Karn in hand. We literally had zero top decks. Keep in mind, every card we played, Worm Coil, Massacre Worm, Karn, they were all in our hand. We just drew fucking lands. Holy crap, dude. I think Containment Priest seems real good when they have Tinker. Wow. Oh my god. What in the earth is this game? This guy exiles any non land permanent. We're just bringing Gideon. Masker Worm actually doesn't seem great. It ended up winning that game, but I don't think it seems like a great card. Neither does Tassiger really against them. Or ta not Tassiger, Yogmoth. Sneaky Labig with the resub. Thank you, buddy. Really appreciate it. Do we have less time than they do? I don't know by how much. Like, Gideon's decent because it exiles any non-land permanent, so we can actually exile. And they don't have a lot of pressure, it seems like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I 
If they didn't attack with Blightsteel, I mean, like, but then, like, we're just attacking into their Blightsteel, which doesn't do anything, right? I mean, Baneslayer could be fine. It could be better than Tassiger. Especially if they got Relic that they just board in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus one, two, three, four, five, six. I think this is actually fine. How can we not play library? Because we're playing a three-color deck. And I don't feel like the odds of having library in turn one. This hand's actually pretty decent. Yeah, I'll just keep this hand. I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go shambling vent though. I think library is fine. I definitely don't think library is nearly as good as uh, people make it out to be. I mean, that's a turn one basalt monolith. That's got to be correct, right? Jack and the Beans talk. Wow. Nature's claim. You got it. Nature's Clam. Ugin, Regrowth, Chalice, Cultivate. God, that Regrowth is really, really kind of obnoxious here, isn't it? They don't have another land, though. Let's take the Regrowth. Come on, White Source, next turn. I feel like if we just land a Bane Slayer, we're actually in great shape. Oh, look, they hit a land for Cultivate. God, so lucky. Let's see what's coming down. Island. So now this is your hand. So next turn you can play this for two. Yep, this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> just drawing, just drawing dead here. Not drawing dead necessarily, but we are drawing dead. We're not. You get it. You get what I'm saying. Forest is gone. Now you're going to... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is still only 7 with Chalice. So you still have to hit land. Yep. I mean, we just don't have an answer for Stupid Ugin. For Stugan, if you will. If Baneslayer comes down, they can neg 5. Well, Una's Prowler is... Not... Not what we're looking for here. Yep, so they're just going to go land Ugin. Seems good. Meanwhile, we had Mana Crypt, Bunch of Lands, Basalt Monolith on turn one. Into Thought Seas. And they still get to Ugin. Eh, what can you do? We tried. I mean, if they don't hit a land, if they hit a Tinker instead, that'd be great. And they didn't. They hit a, they hit a land. So. <sighs> Seems incredible. Cool. I mean, we're in a situation again where, like, I guess we just hope we hit Fate's Fetters. We have time, but it's just kind of annoying. Another swamp, huh? Cool. Glad I boarded in a bunch of white sources. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's exhausting. Yep. Actually, we don't have that much time, do we? Because this just ultimates next turn. So we probably want to play Shambling Vent and just attack it. Or not Shambling Vent, but uh, Containment Priest. Well, that's not wonderful. Attack Ugin. <clears throat> I 
I have a swamp. What's your last card? <laughs> Merkel, the promised end. Oh, man. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven. So they were two, two mana away. Well, I guess I'm glad it's gone. And now they get to Containment Priest. Second White Source this game would have been. Sure. You got it. Come on, White Source. Imperial Seal. One, two, three, four, five. So we can actually get Ugin here. We can get a uh, Gristlebrand. Then they go like negative eight, though, right? And just kill it. And then we have nothing on board. I guess we get to draw seven, though, right? We rolling in trophies? Not yet, my dude. Not yet. Actually, Fetters does seem pretty decent. I mean, Gristlebrand also just hits Fetters, right? So next turn we draw Gristlebrand, right? One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like we just have the mana for it. We play Gristlebrand. I mean, but like we're going down to to seventeen right now. They're probably going to negative eight, which puts this to one. We definitely hit a white source there, though. Vindicates. Vindicates actually decent too. Karn seems. Oh, big Karn. I forgot we had Karn in our deck actually. I think it is Karn actually. Karn seems great here. I mean, it's either Karn or Gristlebrand or Face Fetters or Vindicate. I think those are our options. I think it's gotta be Karn, right? Yeah, let's get Karn. I'm gonna discard Manslayer because right now I think our uh, our odds of drawing on Barrel Rights uh, is also fine. I mean, they don't get anything because of Containment Priest, right? But we still don't get the Karn. So it's like... <laughs> can we... Can we... Can we... Can we at least acknowledge that this is unfucking believable <laughs> Oh, Jesus God. It's just amazing, dude. Actually incredible. Did they exile something? They exiled our Gristlebrand. Cool. Yep. So now we have Karn, Vindicate, and uh... Cool. So now they can just ultimate next turn. Now they hit a land. Yeah. Fucking amazing. <sighs> exactly the turn they needed. Literally, a land before that, a land after that. And they didn't even actually kill the Containment Priest in order to actually play the Gristlebrand. So, cool. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, man. Primal Titan, Blightsteel, Leon, and Relic Order. <laughs> Mirar, Swake, Fast Bond. Yeah. I hope this dude plays the lottery. I hope they really do because they could be the next millionaire today. Thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to tell me how fucking miserable these matches are. And uh, check out manatraders.com, coolstuffinc.com, patreon.com slash Frank Lepore, and check out uh, Freshly Brewed, wherever podcasts can be found. I'll see you guys next time.